Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 160, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. Um, well, uh, sometimes our tips uh, straggle into more than five minutes uh, or we cheat a little bit, but today we're going to jump right in. We're going to, nobody's going to waste more than five minutes. We're going to be in and out. So, uh, Let's let's jump right in. Um, so, and I'll I'll introduce my tip by saying uh, I recently was working on a performance problem with a query. The query. Oh, I want to turn it on that timer. No cheating at all today. Um, I was working on a query. It was really long. It was I don't know, I don't know maybe two hundred lines long. It was a long query. It had twenty tables in it, all kinds of joins. Um, and Marwa, I was actually working with you and. It was in French, which is a lot easier for you than for me. Um, yes. <laughs> but the, so I just threw it together, this this uh, nonsense query. But you know, it was it, it just looked like nonsense to me because all of the table names were in in French and so forth. And I focused in on a particular join that I thought was giving us problems. And almost everywhere, the columns were alias and so forth. But the column in the join didn't have an alias on it. And so I couldn't tell which of the 20 plus tables this was in. And so I used my method that I would normally do for this. And I came into SQL commands and I said, select star from user tab columns where column name equals selling price. And I got, I got an answer. Um, but I do this kind of thing a lot and I'm forever trying to figure out, well, what's, you know, what's the right data dictionary view to use and so forth. Um, but turns out, Marwa, you know a better, certainly an easier way, I'd say a better way to do this than the way I was doing. What, what's, the, what's the easy way to do it? Yes, um, well, Apex provides multiple reports that could help you with this. So if you go to SQL Workshop, Utilities, and then Object Reports, right there, yes. Notice the first option table columns. Of course, it's of course it's the first option, right? Yeah, <laughs> the very first one, right? And if I search for selling price, so I, I just go ahead and do it again. Uh, if I search for selling price, I get that table, and I don't even have to. Oop, I don't even have to put a, di uh, a uh, uh, an upper or anything on it. Super super easy. Um, but what what it really is is there's a whole bunch of utility. Well, first there are a ton of utilities here. But within the utilities, there's also a whole bunch in the object reports. Um, uh, we've talked before about unindexed foreign keys. We've talked about these exception reports. But there's a lot more in here. One of my um, favorite ones is um, also the data dictionary itself. I I don't always remember. Look, if I'm looking about for something about materialized views, for example, I can actually go in here and say materialized views. And not only does it look at the name of the table, it looks at the comments as well, which is important because a lot of times the comments, you know, user M views. Well, okay, I'm not going to remember that. I might have tried user materialized views, but this report I find is to be find to be really he helpful. Um, if I tried um, to look at columns, for example, um, I if I do columns, if I was looking for a view, I might actually be looking for view columns, right here. It turns out. I could I would actually be looking for user tab columns again because that has views. My my point here, this data dictionary makes it really easy to look at the comments as well. Lots of other reports. What's another report that's your one of your favorites? Yes, so recently I had an error. It's uh, it's about a concentrate, a unique or a primary key one, I don't remember, but um the name of the constraint did not mean much to me. I couldn't tell the it belongs to uh, what table? So this report helped me a lot to to uh, find right. that. You could just constraint. copy that, copy that constraint right in there, put it in here, and you know whatever the constraint name is, you can find it really quickly. It'll tell you what kind, of and then you can go dig into it farther. But it gives you a place to start. So table constraints, I like that one. Um, I'll say table storage sizes. If you want to know what what how much space you're taking in in your uh, in your schema. You can see how big your tables are. You can look at things like uh, table statistics. In any case, a whole bunch of things that you can do here. Um, I often have to look for, um, if, I, if I've 
change the table name or something like that. I want to search all of the PL, PL SQL code. So if I, if I know that my table name used to be, um, you know, AFCR, FW and I've changed it. Well, I want to find out all of the tables so I can take a look for, you know, every table with a particular name or every every place that in the package it uses a particular table. Um, and uh, let me just say uh, whatever it might be, user underscore objects. Have I ever used user score underscore objects in any of my PL SQL? It looks like I have, right? So I've actually queried it. So uh, it's a way to look at all of my PL SQL at once. Anyway. Well, that maybe, is, go ahead. I will be cheating a little bit. Yeah. Maybe okay. after looking for the impact of changing the name of the table or adding columns, you can go check the invalid objects report. That could help. Wow. To see a few. Another great report. I, I, I'm glad you brought this report up. So, Maro, what should you do with this report? Look for uh, like the invalid I'm objects. Give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. Subscribe, right? Yes. We're <laughs> looking at this report when you are altering the table, but you can even subscribe to this. Right. And it's certainly worthwhile. I think in your production environment, you really shouldn't have any invalid objects, right? There shouldn't be anything invalid in production. Go ahead and subscribe to this report. Get yourself a, uh, a subscription and off we go. Rich knew the answer. Subscribe. Um, so. Um, so there we go. We we didn't really cheat. I don't think this was just a, a little conversational, but um, that's your five minutes today. Go take a look at these object reports um, to determine which ones that you feel you should um, subscribe to, because I think there really are a bunch in here that you should subscribe to in both your dev environment and in your production environment. And that is the big one. Um, so, uh, Brian, thank you. That sums up why we did today's tip. I think it's all about just that reminder that these things are out there and just a, a moment's, you know, oh, wait a minute, I can, I can go do this really, really quickly. Um, perfect. All right, well, um, oh, wow, all of our videos. That's a lot, Marwa. If only seen every one of them, that would be whew, impressive. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for joining. Uh, Marwa, any last thoughts before we get people out of here? This is an interesting tip. Um, thank you for that. And I would like to wish you all happy weekends. Oh, yes, thank you. All right, well, goodbye, everybody. Do all the things. If you like the show, like the show. You know, I don't know, you're supposed to subscribe and you know, all that thing, those things. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.